Hey there. Today I wanted to look at the observer pattern. This is a really cool pattern, and the one I'm going to show is, I guess, my own tailored version toward Roblox development, but the idea is really simple. The idea is that given some sort of state that can change, we want to be able to hook a function into it, and that function should be able to be fired every time that state changes. The, the change that I've made to this pattern is that it also includes a cleanup function, which some observer patterns have and some don't. And the idea is that once a given function receives a change, and once it changes again, um, that function that was observing it can return a function that will be fired again uh, when that state changes. So let me look at an example. So my, my favorite example here would be the collection service in observing tags. And so I've created this um, observe tag function, and I'm not going to go into this too much how this works, since there's a lot of little weird things. But this script shows how to use it, and I think it makes things just really clean and, and kind of fun to work with. So imagine that I have this disco tag, and I want to use it to make a part flash different colors. So we have this observe tag function, we give it the tag, and we give it a function. And this function is going to run for every instance that's uh, tagged with disco, um, and then we have a, a function that's returned, and this function would be called any time this part uh, loses that tag or loses its position in a hierarchy, it gets destroyed or something like that. So that's as simple as it gets, right? It's super easy for us to observe um, a tagged instance, do some sort of code, and then clean up once that tag goes away. So let's look at this example then. Again, we have this disco part and we want to make it flash different colors. So in order to do this, we need to hook up a function. I'll call it on update. And we'll hook this into the run service. We'll have heartbeat goes run service dot heartbeat connect on update. And then every heartbeat, we're just gonna flash it a random color. So we're gonna say part dot color equals color three dot new math dot random three times. Easy. And then when the tag goes away, we just need to disconnect the heartbeat just like that. And we're done. Now we've written code that uh, when we run, it's going to flash the disco color on any part that's tagged. So let's run and nothing's tagged with it yet. And I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna click this part, I'm gonna click on the checkbox for Disco, and we can see it flashing colors now. And they're both flashing colors. And then we can turn one off, we can turn it back on just by turning the tag on and off. Pretty cool, right? Now obviously that's flashing a little too fast, so we could uh, turn that down a little bit. Uh, we could create an update thread and we'll just wait, um, task out wait, let's say 0 0.2 seconds, and then we'll call on update. And then here, all we have to do is task.cancel update thread. Turn our disco settings on there, and there we go. We've got uh, these flashing parts. So it's pretty easy to use, and um, I really like this observing pattern because there's, there's so much we can do with it. So really quick, let's build our own version and I'm gonna do one that um, simply watches attributes. So anytime an attribute changes, we want to uh, know what its state is. So this is different from just connecting to a changed event because we're also getting the current state. And that's kind of a significant difference, right? So let's create a module script and we'll call it observe attribute. And what we wanna do is we wanna give it some sort of instance that, we're, that the attribute is on and then also an attribute name. And then basically we want to call a callback function uh, whenever we have that attribute changed. So I also need a callback function. And this function is gonna have the value of the attribute. We're just gonna say it's unknown as for now. And this function is actually going to return a function, not blank, so it's gonna look a little weird, but it's gonna return a function. And our top level one is also going to return a function as well, which looks really funny, but that's what we've got going here. And just to make sure we are playing nicely with the type system, we'll put on strict mode. We need to return a function. 
This is a, a cleanup function on the top level. So if I go back to my observe tag thing here, if I wanted to completely clean up this observer and stop observing, um, I could capture the stop function that's returned here. And at any point I could call stop and it will uh, stop observing disco and any currently running things, uh, the, the cleanup function would be run. And now what we wanna do is just say anytime that a attribute changes or the current value is something, uh, we should fire this callback. And in this case, we're gonna say we wanna ignore nil values. So the attribute doesn't exist currently, uh, we don't wanna fire the callback. So we'll say function on attribute changed, and then we will create that connection. So we'll say instance get attribute changed signal, the name of the attribute, and we'll connect that to on attribute changed. We'll grab that connection value, and we're gonna disconnect that in this cleanup function here. And then we're gonna do something kind of funny. We're gonna do a task.defer, and in our task.defer, we're gonna do uh, a check. Basically, we, this is our initial value check, right? So local value equals uh, instance get attribute and the name. And if value is not equal to nil, then we'll call on attribute changed. Now, the reason I did this in a task.defer is to catch a interesting race condition possibility. Now, which one is kind of fine in this case, but we just want to avoid it no matter what, which is if you call observe and then you immediately clean it up, we don't even want it to run the initial check. So for whatever reason you cleaned it up right away, uh, we don't want it to uh, run this at all. So what we, what we can do to make that check is, is quite simple. All we have to do is check to see if this function is still connected or not, because it's getting disconnected here. So what I have to say is if not connected, then return it. So this is gonna get our initial value. And this is going to capture any changed values. And then that's gonna fire the on attribute changed function. So now we need to actually get the value here. So we can actually just copy this code here. And we do need to do a nil check again uh, because it could be nil when this changes. And because of that, we really probably don't need to check it here. We probably can just uh, call it regardless because we're already doing the check here. Okay, so we're checking the value if it's nil, if it's not nil rather. And if it's not nil, then we wanna call the callback. We can just do this a simple way first. So we can do callback and we wanna pass it the value, right? And this should return a function, which would be our cleanup. But now what do we do with this cleanup function? Well, ideally we store this function somewhere and we need to call it as well. And when should we call the function? Well, there's two places we should call it. First off is anytime on attribute changed is called. Um, and so we need a way to call it here, even if it's nil. Um, and also when we clean up. So let's store our cleanup function here, cleanup fn. And this is a function type. We'll set it to nil for now. And we'll assign it there. Now, because it can be nil, we should check it here. Um, so before we even do anything, we'll say if cleanup function is not equal to nil, then we'll call that cleanup function. Now, some of this code is not safe yet, but we'll get that in a second here. Um, <clears throat> now, we also want to clear this. And the reason we want to clear that is because um, there's a possibility we don't assign it here uh, if the value is nil. So that needs to be set to nil here. Now it's kind of complain because it thinks this function has to be a function. Uh, we don't want it to be, it should be optionally a function. So in order to do that, we have to say it's optionally a function, which I'm surprised that works. Usually we probably have to wrap it in parentheses and that's probably a better way to represent the whole values of uh, a function, maybe. <laughs> and um, otherwise it's nil. So now we can assign it to nil. And uh, now we're pretty much done with the, the main code. Now there's some unsafe aspects of this that we need to get into still, but we'll get to that in a second. First of all, I did forget to also call this down here. Okay, let's talk about the possible issues with this code, uh, particularly around the callback and the cleanup function uh, would be error handling and also yielding. Those are two big problems with this sort of observer pattern that we have to kind of tackle. So first of all, let's look at the cleanup function. I think the easiest way for us to handle this is just to wrap it in task.spawn. 
And that's gonna go off and call this function right away on its own coroutine. Um, and if it fails, it won't stop our code running here, uh, but it will show the proper error in the error stack as needed. And so we should probably do the same down here as well. And then we get our value. And then if we have a value, then we call callback. And then similarly, what if callback fails? Um, but not only what if it fails, but what if for some reason callback uh, yields or something like that, uh, then we have kind of a, a weird problem to handle, right? Because if callback yields, uh, what, what do we do with that information? Because what if it yields and then in the time it yielded, the value changed a bunch of times? If the value changed a bunch of times, uh, then we have a, a weird issue where um, our cleanup function um, is, is incorrect, right? We may call this over top of itself multiple times. And so we need to make sure that we're uh, essentially thread safe in a sort of way. It really, it's a concurrency problem more than anything. And we want to make sure that uh, we're doing that properly. So a way we can do this, probably the simplest way we can do this is, uh, again, we're going to kind of wrap this in a task.spawn and we're going to kind of create an ID, an ID that's unique every time on attribute changes. And we're going to use that ID to see that if after the callback is done, uh, we're still in the same ID. And uh, if so, then we're good to go and we can set the cleanup function. If not, then we should call that cleanup function right away without assigning it to our global cleanup function value there. So we'll say uh, changed ID, we'll set it to zero. And then down here, we'll say ID equals changed ID. And we'll increment it by one here. So we'll increment the ID and then we'll capture a, a saved clone of that value, essentially. We're copying it over to ID. And so that means that now we can do task.spawn here. We can capture a cleanup function. And then now what we can do is we can check if uh, our ID is the same. So if ID is equal to changed ID, then we'll set the clean function to that ID. Oops, to the clean function rather. Um, otherwise, we've run into a concurrency problem where uh, once our callback finished, we've changed, <laughs> right? So this function has run again because this ID has changed. And so in that case, we should just call clean right away. And we're not gonna assign it to anything. So that's probably the simplest way to deal with this. Uh, the other concurrency problem here is what if we cleaned up this function by the time this callback came back? Um, in that case, uh, we have another issue there, right? It, so it, there's a couple ways we could solve this. One, we could just increment the changed ID by one here, um, which might be the simplest way, but I think it's a little unclear what's going on there. And so another way and that I'd probably rather do it is to use this same code here to see if this uh, event is connected still. Uh, the problem is it's down here and it needs to be down here. And so what we need to do is we need to declare this value, this, this variable up here. This is going to be RBX script connection. And then we get rid of the local there so it's not shadowed. And then we can use the same piece of code here. And we can say if ID is equal to change ID and on enter changed connection is connected, then we're saying that that's good to go. We'll assign a clean function. Otherwise, we'll clean up. So it's a little confusing, but the idea is that we're kind of dealing with concurrency problems there. And now, ideally, we have a pretty uh, good and solid implementation of an observe attribute function. Let's test. That's a lot of code to write without testing. So we have our, our disco version here. Now let's um, add in observe attribute. And let's say we want to observe an attribute of the base plate. Why not? So we're going to say observe attribute. And the instance is workspace.baseplate. Uh, the name, we're just going to call it test. And our function is uh, some value. We'll just call it value. And we need to return a function, which is our cleanup. And then here, what we can say is something like uh, print test and then the value. And then our cleanup, we can say test cleanup with that value. So if this works, then when we set our attribute, uh, we should see it print out test in the value. And then anytime we change that value, we should first see it say cleanup, and then we should see it print out again the new value. So let's try that. We'll run the game. And then we'll select the base plate, and we're gonna watch for this output here to see if anything happens. And I'm gonna go down to attribute, I'm gonna add test, 
and I'm going to make it uh, a number. I'll save it and it says test zero because zero is the number. So let's set it to 10. We see it said test cleanup zero because that number no longer exists there and now it's 10. So that's working. So let's try 50. We see that works just fine. 100 works fine. And if we delete it, we should see it says cleanup, but it doesn't get triggered again. So it works just as expected. So that's pretty cool, right? And now we have a working observing pattern for attributes just like that. Hopefully that's kind of an interesting and more technical dive into this kind of fun observing pattern. And while they, they can be kind of tricky to implement as we've seen, or there's a lot of little things we have to watch out for, uh, what they give us is this really clean and easy to use interface into um, observing some sort of state, whatever it may be. And uh, that, this is a pattern I really like and is one I've really picked up using. That's all I've got here. If you've got any questions about this, let me know. I am creating a GitHub repository where I'm going to start adding some of these observers that I've created and I'm going to open source most of them.